Today on the Transplant Help, we're going to be answering a question I've asked a number of times, and that is what, if any, over-the-counter medications is safe for me to take as a transplant patient? Stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome to Transplant Help today. My name is Jim Merle. I can't even tell you the number of times I picked up the phone, called my coordinator, only to ask her, what medicine can you give me over the counter to help me out? And obviously, sometimes I'm talking about a sore throat, a runny nose, a stuffed up head, a fever, a headache, a stomach ache, you name it. I probably called my coordinator in the past and asked her questions like that. And the reason I do that, just like you would, is you know also that many of us as transplant patients have to be very, very cautious when it comes to reaching in our medicine cabinets, grabbing something off the pharmacy shelf, and just popping it trying to be like the rest of the free world, right? You know that many of the medications can interact with and inadvertently mess up, if you will, your immunosuppressant slash anti-rejection drugs and really, really cause some problems. In addition to that, some of those medications can do things like increase your heart rate, your blood pressure, your blood sugar, can, can really just give you a lot of side effects you don't want to have to deal with. Side effects that most of the world wouldn't experience, but because you're a transplant patient, you would. So I always recommend, and I'm recommending it right now, 100% of the time, always pick up the phone and call your coordinator and ask them for their recommendations specific to your transplant type and your condition. That's the best bet. And a side bonus of that comes in in that like I've done many a time, say for example, I've got a cough, I call my coordinator and I say, hey, Connie, is it okay if I take some Robitussin for this cough? She sometimes says, yeah, go ahead. But then she oftentimes offers and says, no, don't do that. Let me call you in a prescription, which will work a lot better. And so sometimes you kind of get a free prescription without even going to the doctor just by making them aware of what's going on. So call your coordinators, call your teams. That's the best bet. And maybe you'll get a hidden benefit like that when you do. Now, with that said, what are some of the common medications that are available for us over the counter that can help us out with certain conditions? Let's start out with pain in general, whether it's a headache, uh, sore, achy muscles, bones, what have you, what can you take? Well, generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, you can only take acetaminophen. Now, most of the time, they'll tell you, take acetaminophen or Tylenol and stay away from everything else. They don't like you taking, uh, for example, Neoproxen sodium, which is um, uh, Aleve, they don't like you taking aspirin. They don't like you taking ibuprofen, all for different reasons. Now, as far as the Aleve goes and as far as the ibuprofen goes, that generally comes into case because that can have some effect on your kidneys. So they want you to avoid that. So you can see if you're a kidney transplant patient, absolutely don't touch this stuff. But even if you're another type of transplant like me, a heart, they like to watch my kidneys very, very closely and they don't want me taking those medications, which can possibly cause some damage to them. Now, when it comes to something as simple as an aspirin, they might also say that's a no-no. And the reason they do that is because many of us are already on some form of blood thinners post-transplant. If it's nothing more than a baby aspirin a day, if you're a heart transplant patient, you need to be taking that and not taking, for example, three bare aspirins every four hours because you've got a terrible headache. That's going to do too much to thin your blood, to bring your INR, mess it all up, and cause a problem. So as far as pain goes, they're probably going to recommend you to stick with acetaminophen or Tylenol. By the way, no matter what the brand, you need to be looking at the label, reading it like a food label, and seeing what the main active ingredients are. That's how you judge these medications, not by the common household name like Tylenol. Look at the ingredients on the back. Now, supposing someone is dealing with something different. Now, I've got a list here, by the way. I'm going to be posting in a link below the video that you can access here in a bit that will help you out a lot as far as dividing this stuff up. Supposing you're dealing with um, abdominal bloating or gas. Is there anything I can take for that? Well, yeah, there actually is. Most teams will allow you to take Mylana gas or gas X when it comes to that. I don't know what you deal with, but I deal with a lot of bloating, especially after a meal. You know, I eat a good meal. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not going to affect me. Probably by the next morning, I'm going to stand up in front of the mirror. My stomach's going to be flat. Uh, but the night at night before I go to bed, I may look like a guy with a beer belly or, you know, somebody who's just 
uh, the before of the weight loss uh, photos. You know what I'm talking about. And it's not really weight or fat. It's just bloating. And so taking things like myelin, a gas, gas X can help. Uh, suppose you have an allergy. And I mean by that either reaction to something like a, a contact allergy. Sometimes in the summertime around here, we get in the poison ivy, the poison oak, the sumac. If you even know what any of that is, us Southerners all do. But we get into that, and we need some allergy medicine. So they recommend something like Benadryl, the same thing they might recommend for you if you've got uh, you know, a sinus infection or a runny nose. They might say take some Benadryl. It's possible to do that. They also might allow you to have Claritin, but they're always going to specify don't take the D. Don't take Claritin D or anything else. Avoid the Ds. The decongestants in there sometimes can be bad for us and so be real careful uh, allegra d it's the same thing do not take allegra d in that case benadryl is probably your safer bet now me personally i might take benadryl for a contact allergy i don't take it for sinus infection because i like everything to keep running my um ENT told me one time, if it's running, don't chase it. He meant by that, if your nose is running, if you're draining, let it drain, let it go. Don't chase it because chasing it with a Benadryl might stop it. And then you got all this stuff kind of piling up and things getting worse. But that's that's neither here nor there. That's just my personal opinion on that. Now, what if you're dealing with something like constipation? It is possible to take Colace, uh, Paracolace. It's possible to take Metamucil, uh, Delcalax, Miralax, and even some milk of magnesia. That's possible. Obviously, not all, all at one time. That could be bad. But they do say with the milk of magnesia to be sure that if you're going to be taking that, don't take that within two hours of taking your medication, one side or the other. So you've got 9 a.m. medicines. Uh, don't take uh, milk of magnesia at 8.30. That's not good enough. Wait two hours before and two hours after I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because, hey, the stuff might work. It might get you going too quick. You know what I mean by that. And you might get your medicine out too fast before you absorb it. I don't know. But but that's a general recommendation. What about a cough? Cough is one of the things. I've actually got a little bit of a tickly throat right now, and I keep coughing. I've had to redo this video like 15 times because of it. What can I take? Well, things like Robitussin, um, uh, Tabtussin. Um, those types of things are safe. Again, making sure we're not taking anything with a D in it and being sure that if we're diabetic that we take something that's sugar-free or uh, looking out for the alcohol, the same case if you're a diabetic or a kidney patient. That's up to your team, but call them up. And again, I think it's sometimes better to call them because you might get something better if you do that. What about diarrhea? Don't say you have never had it. If you take immunosuppressants, you deal with this. It's pretty well generally safe to take Imodium, but I treat Imodium like I do the Benadryl for stuffed up or runny nose, I should say. Once you take Imodium, be it rest assured, if it works, it will work, and you might not be able to get back going like you need to. And sometimes it's better to let things run its course. However, if you've been experiencing diarrhea more than 24 hours, the Imodium might be just a ticket, and you need to call your team, Okay. Anything that has to do with something going out either through the mouth or through the bottom that's going too quickly, you need to watch that because that's going to easily dehydrate you and could easily cause your immunosuppressants, anti-rejection drugs to get out too fast. What if you've got nausea? Nausea. There are a couple of medications you can pick up, Dramamine, that sort of stuff over the counter that might help with that. But generally, they're only going to recommend, in the first case, just simply taking some Tums or some Rolades. Take something with calcium carbonate in it. That's your first level of defense for nausea. Now, if it's worse than that, if you just don't feel like you're going to be able to hold anything down, call your team. They may call you something in. That's the best bet. What about a sore throat? Sore throat. Uh, just a minute ago, and I've got the wrapper um, right here. I finally spit it out because I couldn't talk with it in. But just a minute ago, I had Hall's cough drop right here. And pretty much any cough drop, a Vicks, a Hall's, um, some more listed on here, or the Ludens, those sort of things, chloroseptic drops and, and sprays, those things are okay for a sore throat. They'll generally help a little bit. Um, again, be careful and cautious about taking any of those herbal cough drops. I like the Ricolas and stuff, but be careful about that. Just clear it with your, your team first because some of those herbal supplements and stuff, they all have questions about, okay? And we're not in here to argue with them. We just need to do whatever they would like us to do. They also recommend for the sore throat, which again, you can take your time and all that sort of thing. What about sleep? Uh, if you've taken steroids, particularly 
Um, you've taken, um, oh, thank goodness I forgot. Uh, prednisone, that's it. I'm all for prednisone, by the way. I've got several episodes I'll link to here about it. But if you're taking prednisone, you probably had trouble sleeping. What can you take? Uh, things like Simply Sleep, Unisom, Benadryl, and z can generally be taken, but check with your team. And if you've got any kind of sleep problems that go beyond that, they might send you off for a sleep study like they did me, or they might give you a prescription, a drug like Ambien or something like that, but check with your team. But those are some of the over-counter options that are generally accepted. As far as other things here, I've got a whole page. Page three is a whole page for antibiotics we can take, but they're not going to be over-the-counter. But generally, the Zethromycin, the Z-Packs, the Bactrims, those are all safe, probably things you've been on before, and, and so you can take that type of thing. But always, I say it one more time, I've got four pages I'll link to here below. Always check with your team first. That's the ticket. Be sure it's something they recommend, something that's safe for you, and then you know use your experience, what works, what doesn't. But stay away from anything with the D in it. If you're a transplant patient, avoid things like ibuprofen and aspirin. Uh, not that they're going to kill your graveyard dead instantly, but they can cause some problems. But always be safe, be healthy, be happy, and be strong. I appreciate you joining me down on this program. If this helped you in, out in any way, how about give me a big thumbs up, either one of these you want to choose. Give me a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing to this program right beneath here. Maybe hit the bell notification off to the side of that. You can be notified whenever I put out new content several times a week, generally on Tuesday and Thursday, but I put some bonus episodes out there too. And uh, I appreciate you joining me. If this helped you out in any way, comment below. Let me know. Encourage me and tell me your story. What are you taking over the counter that has helped you out and does your team approve it? I think I hope they will, but uh, tell me about it. We can share it with the transplant community. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, stay stronger, friends. 